here. I only had a, a good time this morning in Sunday school. I just came here. We just decided that we were going to worship the Lord. This is a total impromptu worship service, but we're going to just have some church tonight. How many is ready to have a move of God in this place? We started singing it earlier. We said, my God is more than enough. He shall supply all my needs. He's my El Shaddai. He is the great I am. And I'm come to sing that again because I was just feeling that this morning and I didn't feel like we quite finished our worship. So if you were here this morning, this is a repeat, but if you weren't, let's just have some church. My God is more than
is defeated. I'm victorious. Jesus is alive. He's not dead. Hallelujah. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives and he's alive right now. He's got all power in heaven and earth. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter number 13. If you're at the altar, you stay at the altar and worship whatever you feel like doing. But Luke 13, beginning in verse 31 and verse number 32. Luke 13, 31 and 32. The Bible says, the same day there came certain of the Pharisees and saying unto him, Get thee out, depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. I want to minister for a moment out of verse number 32. Jesus tells them to go and tell that fox. I want to minister for a little bit today, kind of a goofy title, but what does the fox say? Hallelujah! What does the fox say? Hallelujah! I feel the Holy Ghost in this place today.
destruction, and straight is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that would find it. And the conclusion of the message, the Pharisees came and told Jesus something. They said, leave, because Herod is going to kill you. Now, if you don't know the relationship between Jesus and the Pharisees, it wasn't the greatest of relationships. They weren't buddies. They weren't friends on Facebook. They weren't tweeting at each other. They didn't come over for dinner. They didn't have all that stuff. They, they weren't the best of friends. The Pharisees were always trying to get Jesus to mess up, say the wrong thing, or catch him doing something contrary to the law. They didn't like how he was messing up their religion, taking their crowds away from them. They weren't interested in his success or even in keeping him alive. They didn't tell Jesus to go because Herod would kill me because they were wanting to spare his life. It wasn't about that. They wanted him dead. There was an ulterior motive behind what they were trying to tell Jesus. They told him that Herod wanted them to leave the city. But they said that so they wouldn't have to deal with him anymore. They had an ulterior motive. And Jesus responds back to them by saying, and he said unto them in verse number 32, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. He calls Herod a fox. Fox literally means a fox, but figurative, figuratively it means a sly or a cunning man. In other words, Jesus knew what was going on here. He knew that he and the Pharisees didn't want him around. He knew that they were trying to squelch his ministry. He knew they didn't want the sick to be healed at his hand. He knew they didn't want the lame to walk. He knew they didn't want the blind to see. He knew they didn't want people with infirmities to be delivered. He knew that they were only interested in themselves and a kingdom for themselves. And Jesus responds by calling them a fox. Now there's a famous YouTube video that became popular some guys got together and made this ridiculous song called What Does the Fox Say? And if you've ever seen it, it is probably the most ridiculous thing that you've ever seen on Facebook. It is the biggest, fattest waste of time. But I'll tell you what, that thing is a catchy little tune and you start singing What Does the Fox Say? And they start off by talking about, you know, what a mouse says and what a duck says. These are full grown adults dressed up like foxes. These are a bunch of crazy people. And they're talking about, you know, dogs go bark and cats say meow and all this stuff. And then they ask Nobody says, hey, that's what a fox says. He makes that noise right there. So they go on this whole little chorus about what a fox says. It's a big old thing. So they go on, what does this fox say? But let me just relay this thing to the spirit. Let me tell you about what the fox says in the spirit. This is what Jesus pinpointed him as a fox. I want to tell you what the fox says. The fox says that you're never going to make it. The fox says that you are a loser. The fox says that you are a sinner. The fox says that you are worthless. The fox says that you are a hypocrite because you go to church and then you mess up from time to time. The fox says that you don't need to get too fanatical with your worship and with your praise. The fox says that you don't have to pray. The fox says that you can miss a few services and still be okay. The fox says that you shouldn't be 
chapter number three, we find a story of a lame man. Been lame since birth, and he's laying outside the temple. He's laying out of the temple. He's there, and everybody passes him, giving him alms, and finally Peter and John, they come to him. He says, hey man, I need some alms. And they say, hey, I don't have any silver or gold, but what I have, I'm going to give it to you. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, rise up and walk. He takes him by the hand, and the Bible says immediately, and his ankle bones receive strength, and he stands up, and he begins to walk, and begins to leap, and begins to pray for God. And this thing started a, a massive uproar in the city. The religious leaders of that time, they were looking at that saying, man, we were trying to shut up Jesus. We were trying to get rid of him. He's crucified. He's gone. He's done away with. And, you know, we thought we were done with all this stuff. We weren't going to have to battle this stuff anymore. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, they call these people in together, Peter and John and this man. They begin to talk about what had happened. And you go to Acts 4, 15 to 18, the Bible says that when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them. I like it how they can't even deny what had just been done. They don't
of Colossians. Luke 19, 32 through 40. The Bible says, somebody can come and play a moment's page. Luke 19, 32 through 40. The Bible says that they that were sent their way, even as he had said unto them, this is basically Palm Sunday. And they go in and they were loosing the colt. Jesus told the disciples, go find the colt, loose and bring them in. So now they're loosing the colt, verse 33. The owners there said unto them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, the Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus. They cast their garments upon the colt. And they set Jesus there on him. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now in the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. Not a small voice, not a quiet voice, but with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. They began to worship because of what they had seen, because of what they had experienced. Saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Love the Father. Because the word says, if I honor God with the first fruit, 
and I bring my tithes and offerings into the storehouse, that the windows of heaven are going to be opened up, and I'm going to be poured out a blessing that I cannot even begin to contain. I don't care what the fox has to say. I'm going to do what the Word of God says. The fox says, don't worship. Guess what? Let's go worship him. The fox says, don't lay hands. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go lay hands on somebody. The fox says, don't testify. I'm going to find somebody to begin to testify. Fox says, you're at a restaurant. You should be ministering to people. I was told Thursday night, we had some people who go to Applebee's. They were just doing their thing, eating dinner and all that stuff. The waitress, and all of them, they were talking. I don't know, having a good time. Brother Titus said that he looked at Alante, and Alante had that look in his eye, and he looked like he was going to minister to her. Titus was like, dude, what are you waiting for? Let's go get this thing done. Go minister. Do something. So they began to talk and minister. God began to minister to this waitress. I guess tears began to flow, and I'm telling you, that woman's life was tough. You know what the fox said? The fox says, keep it to yourself. You're in a restaurant. They're not here to listen to all this mumbo gumbo, all this garbage. They don't need to listen to all that stuff. But somebody looked at the fox and said, I don't care what you've got to say. I'm going to minister when God tells me to minister. I'm going to be used of God. I'm going to preach. I'm going to witness. I'm going to be alive. And that, I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to that lady receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And they're getting baptized in the precious name of Jesus. And getting her life turned upside down. Because somebody didn't listen to what the fox had to say. We've listened to the fox for too long. We're stuck in the same rut, doing the same things that we've always done. Because the fox has been controlling. The fox wanted to control Jesus. And Jesus said, you can talk all you want to. And you can sound whatever you want to sound like. But you are not going to control me. I am going to control you. I don't care. You want me to quit talking? I'm going to yap that much more. The fox has told Bartimaeus, shut up. Quit screaming for Jesus. He's not going to take time for you. The fox has said, be quiet. Stop yelling his name. You're making a fool. You're making a scene. But Bartimaeus said, foxes, I don't care what you've got to say. He cried all the more. Jesus, that son of David, have mercy on me. And he got the Lord's attention, and he was healed that very hour. All because he didn't listen to what the fox had to say. I wonder if anybody's got a message for the fox. Jesus had a message for the fox. And it was, I don't care what you got to say. I'm going to preach. I'm going to teach. I'm going to do miracles. I don't care what the fox says. I think too many of us have given in to what the fox says. But I wonder, can we all stand in this house today? Is there anybody that's got enough boldness in their spirit today to come down to an altar and tell the fox what's up? Is there anybody that's got enough boldness in their spirit to step out of their pew into the altar right now and begin to tell the fox, I am a worshiper. I am a praiser. I am a winner. I am a child of God. I deserve to be here. I deserve to be used of God. I am going to be a blessing. I am going to witness. I am going to testify. I'm going to pray somebody through the Holy Ghost. Is there somebody that's willing to come to an altar today and tell the, tell the devil and tell the fox, I don't care. I don't care what you've got to say. I'm going to receive the Holy Ghost. Stir up right now. Hallelujah. Everybody in this room can receive the Holy Ghost if we would all ignore what the fox says and begin to be used of God. Everybody